Good evening, everyone. My name is Emesha Dobos. I'm a fashion journalist, and it's an honor that I can be the head of this panel. And that's our last panel of the Budapest Fashion and Tech Summit. And we could also witness huge changes in terms of sustainability and technology during the past few years. And the pandemic also brought like a whole new situation for not just the whole fashion industry, but for the region's fashion scene as well. And during this panel, we will dive into details how the pandemic affected this, this region's fashion industry in one hand, the designers, and then the other hand, the production, the manufacturing hub of, of our countries. And I also want to encourage you to ask anything and send our questions. And we are more than happy to answer all of them after the panel. And now let's see our speakers. Hello, everyone. How are you today? Hi. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Hi. It's so good to see you here. <laughs> yeah, it's so good. Great to be here. <laughs> thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah, thank you for having us today. Thank you. Are you ready? Can we jump into the first question? Born so ready. ready. <laughs> <laughs> Have to be. Hey, that's what I wanted to hear. <laughs> um, my first question is, on the one hand, it's about the fashion designers of your country, and the other hand, it's the production companies. And I'm very interested in how they handled the first wave of the pandemic and how they wanted to prepare and how they managed the second one. Jofi, may I ask you to, to tell yeah, us about absolutely. the Hungarian situation? 
Yeah, so I think it's not, not um, I think it's not just in Hungary. Uh, I think it's all the world uh, was the same that uh, uh, as the pandemic uh, arrived, uh, or the COVID arrived to Hungary, uh, it's prompt and, and suddenly stopped everything here. So uh, the consumer stopped shopping, uh, I absolutely understand why, because in this situation that uh, everything is, um, you don't know what to, what will happen in this case you don't buy uh, anything just maybe food and not clothes so that's mean uh, they all the brands uh, was uh, was really in the in, immediately um, stuck uh, stuck so and also the produ production part was a really difficult time because uh, many of uh, the producers and big brands are working together with Asian and different countries. That's mean all the all all the industry stopped in many ways. That's mean in Hungary the producers also had to stop the production part because they didn't get the textiles and and many things to finish their works. So they changed uh, their pro pro uh, producing um, system. And uh, I think in all the countries, uh, they started to, to make masks and uh, doing, uh, uh, doing garments for, um, for the hospitals and, and to have uh, this situation. But uh, after uh, after after uh, a few months, they get back to the to the reality because uh, it started the consume and everything. So it's a difficult time for for many aspects of the supply chain uh, that suffered during the the first um, uh, first wave of the pandemic. Well, you, you mentioned the, the, you know, the connections to Asia, for example, in Slovenia, it was also a problem because uh, uh, a lot of uh, materials and uh, suppliers were from Italy. And you know that Italy has been hit, you know, really badly, you know, in the first pandemic, you know, so it was like a lot of materials got stuck on borders and also our designers didn't get them and so on. So it was the first awareness of it's like, okay, the world has became quite small, you know, and yeah. we should turn to local and so on. And at first it was disbelief and it was like, okay, they, it's not, not everything is going to close down, but basically it did. And after that, it was, okay, what should we do? So uh, a lot of countries had those uh, masks initiatives and so on. And also in Slovenia was one of them that actually got a week or two ago, uh, one of the L style awards for, for the that mask sign initiative that went to hospitals and to people who didn't have them. Because in the first wave masks were uh, a must, but not mm -hmm. being on the market because Asia closed down. So yeah, turning to sustainability, to recycling, to reusing and so on. In Slovenia, it was quite a weird situation because we, we were quite just before the next fashion week was supposed to happen yeah. and we needed to cancel it and to postpone it. So it was like, uh, well, it, 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 was, it was a hard hit. Uh, so those who survived the first few months um, some of them closed down, but a lot of them actually right after the, pan, uh, the first epidemic wave uh, went through, actually sold a lot of their collections because it was like panic buying or something, <laughs> some kind of relief when everything opened. So it was 50% for bad and 50% really, really good. So mm -hmm. it's... Uh, also here in Slovakia, regarding the mask, as you mentioned, uh, what I was really happy to see was the flexibility of the designers and the tailors, because yeah, the lockdown came within a, like from one day to another, and the designers and tailors, uh, the all these creative uh, uh, people, are really able to flexibly change their focus. So they were able to to put away their collections and to start to produce the mask and all the garments that were really needed. So I think that this is really the strong point of, uh, of fashion designers and the creative sector to be really flexible and they are able to react very fast.
Uh, we don't have in Ukraine much fabric uh, production, for example, but uh, what we noticed that actually uh, lockdown and crisis is a very nice opportunity to uh, start develop the fabric production in such country as Ukraine. Um, probably if you have the you know, same situation and you don't have uh, much fabric production, of course, designers are um, eager to order the Italian fabrics, for example, or um, another European fabrics. But what we noticed that uh, actually local designers uh, became more attentive to local fabrics uh, just because they don't have opportunity to uh, order, for example, European fabrics. And I believe uh, this kind of uh, development can uh, actually support the fabric production in, uh, in our country, for example. And probably if you have the same situation, maybe this also can be a nice opportunity. And Camille, what happened in, in Austria during this I crazy year? I think it's kind of um, the same than everybody. A lot of masks being produced um, and um, a lot of initiatives um, which allowed designers to not be completely in a really bad situation uh, economically as well. You know, it was not only for, for the good of the others, but also to save their, their businesses, actually. And uh, also it was a really the understanding of the, for the designers that they have to strengthen their um, um, online presence and have like online shops, for example, or define new um, social media strategies. Also understand that there is not only an international audience for the garments, for example, but the national one is important, et cetera. So it brought kind of a, a lot of new topics on the table. And how do you see the current state of sustainability in your in your countries? And how do you see the, the role of the pandemic towards sustainability? I think it's it's the biggest opportunity now uh, because uh, before the pandemic, we already uh, and this this uh, industry already uh, worked with sustainable. Uh, lines because it's 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 a must to to make sustainable the whole industry. But now the situation is is get quicker this um, this uh, this part, and that means uh, all the supply chain uh, now can be shorter. So I think it's it's also um, some of the positive part of the of the uh, pandemic because now uh, the we can as as uh, Daria said, uh, so now we can change the method of the supply chain. Maybe we can make our own uh, textiles or we can source the textile from, from the neighborhood countries, so closer to our countries. And we can also make uh, all the other part of the supply chain easier to make omnichannel uh, sales and and use much more the di digital part. So it's it's many many aspects that now it's getting uh, um, uh, more important. And other ways, I think it's uh, in this case the whole the generation is um, the new generation is is uh, it gets so many information from the internet. So you have to. Change change the, in the really uh, sustainable way so uh, they cannot um, uh, so it's, it, it have to be the right one and uh, it's it's time to change for for everybody well yeah sustainability a few years ago it was still like you know being a martian when you said that yeah. you're sustainable <laughs> you know but we had a few quite strong sustainable brands but not many and uh, this year, for example, it was quite uh, a surprise to see that, uh, okay, we knew that younger generation is much more sustainable than the older one, but now everybody has kind of turned to that way. So, um, and uh, as you said, it's much better for locals because now we are looking for local materials. Uh, now we don't have to transport all those things a, a long way and so on. So that's sustainable too. Uh, so, so we are searching for solutions locally but uh, also you know there's another aspect of it it's it's all internet based and it's uh, quite great because the world has become smaller in a way much more distant for example some getting something from asia it's uh, almost mission impossible okay not now but then it was you know and but now being online is uh, however good you are selling 
and you can really sell locally well and local things well. That's what I want to say. <laughs> I think also a very important part uh, in the system is the consumer, because I believe that most of the designers are really aware of the sustainability and all the processes behind. And uh, for most of them, it's very, uh, it's their goal to be sustainable because they feel what is the advantage for them. But on the other side, we have the consumer. And I really feel that I also during this pandemic, this is the opportunity how to deliver the information to the consumer and to, to educate them because the, if the consumer chooses to buy local and to buy designer stuff, and then we know that there will be like the switch between the fast fashion and uh, towards the, the local fashion. I think this is also very like the, the, the change that is really expected because uh, if the designers just produce, produce and don't get the feedback, then uh, it's something is not uh, not uh, good but now i also here in slovakia i feel that uh, there are uh, several initiatives who aim to support the local segment so i believe uh, uh, people really are focusing on this and are willing and starting really to understand it very well we have a saying that we are not rich enough to buy cheap Uh, so maybe yeah. sometimes mm -hmm. it's okay to invest in some piece that you can reuse it along yeah. for yeah. a long time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And there is that uh, actually there is statistic now that the uh, uh, generation Y and Z are are um, willing to pay more if mm -hmm. uh, if the clothes are sustainable or or ethic uh, ethical mm -hmm. way produced, mm -hmm. and it's five percent more. Uh, mm -hmm. that they are willing to pay. So I think it's really interesting for the future for anybody. Mm -hmm. Because they have the information, all the information. Oh, Camille, come on. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I also find that, you know, the, the sustainability issue was kind of a bit passive, you know. So if a designer would have found an organic fabric, then you would have said, great, I use it. But it was not so proactive. And uh, this, this shift, started before the pandemic, but the pandemic was kind of a, a mirror, uh, magnifying mirror. So it came like on your face, this, um, this uh, issues of uh, discrimination, inequalities, uh, uh, environmental problems, and um, inclusivity, etc. And now the designers, they feel responsible, you know, it's a, it's a change, I think, in, 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 uh, in the understanding of the, of the real problem. And so it's not only sustainability, but it's also, you know, like this Black Lives Matter movement, for example, was extremely important. And we had like a manifestation with 50,000 people in Vienna. And so you, it, it was influential, extremely influential in, in the fashion uh, industry, you know, so that also locally people understand, okay, we need to work with more people of color, at them in, not only in our campaigns, but also in the teams, et cetera, et cetera. Um, I, I also think that there is um, a lot uh, being done on the institutional level with much more uh, interest from the government for new uh, sus um, yeah, sustainable research and, uh, and policies. And because it has to be in all the fields from the design, but also production, distribution, um, etc. Yeah, so still a lot to do it's not so easy i think it's too difficult for designers to find the uh, um the right fabrics or the right processes or the right um contacts to work on a real sustainable uh, sustainable way but but we are going there no? basically you know sustainability is not only about sustainable materials it's also about reusing yeah. materials also. also we actually have a brand that actually only uses materials from way back from 60s 70s from grandma's closets so that's nice. sustainable too and we know that in 60s they had a lot of bad synthetics and so on <laughs> but if you use it and you use it long and not throwing it away actually that's a sustainable way to use it too so sustainability is a quite a large uh, a uh, large thing that cannot be uh, only put into one small living yeah, yeah, yeah. square. <laughs> of course. And, and how is this sustainability conversation and, and shift towards being more green is going in, in Ukraine? 
Ah, okay, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so uh, actually, I would like to highlight, uh, I'm a sustainable fashion advocate and thank you for giving me awards. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, but, uh, uh, and, I, and I can speak up uh, this topic and others, but I would like to highlight two moments, two points that I think that are very important right now. Uh, I would like to support Camilla with the uh, topic of sustainable, uh, of social responsibility, uh, diversity and inclusivity. I believe uh, during the pandemic, uh, these um, words are became more and more uh, fancy, okay, let's say, but uh, they speed up, uh, but we can see the speeding up of social responsibility among brands. First of all, they are supporting each other. Uh, sec so uh, we have several cases in Ukraine that uh, of um, collaboration of different designers, for example, established designers are supporting young designers. Uh, established designers can support uh, the uh, medicine production by uh, charity projects and social responsibility projects. And of course, we, uh, for example, for Ukraine, inclusivity and diversity is kind of difficult and hard topic. But we, uh, what do we see this year that uh, don't everyone already not too afraid to speak about these topics, and especially the fashion designers and creative sector. And the second uh, topic I would like to highlight is um, development of digital fashion during the pandemic. Uh, what we see, we see a lot of digital, uh, new digital startups that are producing a digital clothing or IR clothing, uh, for example. So we already don't want to buy new clothing, just uh, home stuff, for example. Uh, but we can buy uh, digital clothing and use it as uh, many times as, as possible. Uh, just, uh, I don't know, changing skins, for example, like in games. And uh, this is, I believe, the future of sustainable fashion using um, augmented reality and using digital uh, digital dresses. For example, like uh, it's doing the, uh, I don't remember exactly, I believe uh, Holland um, brand, the fabricant, they were the first one who um, implemented and developed the digital clothing. And we see the, such a progress in Ukraine as well. I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> and during the pandemic, we basically we were forced to to go online and and use social media as the best. So, how do you see our designers? Um, do they use technology well, or what are the biggest difficulties in in terms of fashion designers and and technology and the opportunities of of technology? Well, it depends on a brand, you know, some brands really use the technology well and being online. Uh, I mean, in these times, not being online is like not existing. Yeah. You have to have at least Instagram uh, to sell something, if not an online shop. So, um, but uh, some designers are, let's say, uh, maybe a little bit clumsy with it or maybe don't have time or don't have the knowledge to do it and um, I think that that awareness of investing in your presence online started to be really stronger you know because by now it was like okay we don't have an Instagram can you please open it and uh, and then it, it was like I don't have time for it and so on but now it, it it's it's a must so um, even those who really don't want to do it, did it. Uh, only the oldest and the most established brands can afford to live just on their um, old base of customers. Yeah, and I think also that uh, the digital identity, uh, will it's a must and uh, it won't stop. Uh, because I think like, okay, during the pandemic, events uh, are no-go, uh, markets and fashion weeks were stopped. Instead of all of this came all the digital platforms. And once the pandemic ends, I believe that the digital platforms and all the digital media will stay with us. Uh, we, we see that there is a huge shift towards uh, hybrid events. And uh, I also heard from many organizations that uh, once the pandemic will stop uh, and will be finished, they will not stop with uh, digital uh, events.
events that of course yeah the, the physical ones they will start to happen again but uh, all together we will have also the digital uh, parts and that's why i think now it's the time the best opportunity to, to develop all the systems and to have all the channels for social media and to really invest the time that we cannot invest now uh, in, into events to invest into the digital media because yeah it's gonna be with us forever. <laughs> and Jolfi, what's your opinion on, on the online presence of the Hungarian fashion designers? So it's a, it's a, it's a difficult time for anybody and uh, I absolutely agree with, with both of you uh, because it's, it's a must now to use social media. Uh, we, um, it's really interesting because uh, in, the, in the first uh, wave of pandemic we did a questionnaire about the situation of the designers, how they say the situation, or are they ready to, to change the whole structure, the strategy of, of their brand? And, uh, and, and we got the information that they, they are not ready. They don't know how to do this. And it's, it's also this, this strategy is also included the social media and the communication part. And uh, almost 400 professional market players uh, made, made this research. So it's a, I think it's a huge, uh, huge amount. And, uh, and firstly, we got uh, the information that they need uh, um, the money. They need money. This was the first. But other hands, they need uh, information and knowledge how to do this. Because sometimes, as Melinda said, they, they don't know how to do. So maybe they have no time, but they also don't know how to do this. And it's, in nowadays, it's not easy to use social media because everybody is using social media in a really high level. And uh, the customers are searching for news. So anybody is on, online during the whole day. So you got so many information. So if the brands are not changing the, the way of the communication, they cannot reach the customers. And this is also together with the sales. So now they have many opportunities during the social media made the, made the sales and also to, to, to communicate with the, with the consumers transparency. Uh, and it's, it's, I think this is the most important part because uh, you have to be transparent during your communication because the consumers Sometimes once they they um, they think something is wrong with your brand, they will leave you because there is so many other options in the market. Mm. Not true. Yeah, and it makes the world closer. Mm. If you're if you're uh, if you know what you're doing on the internet, it's not only you know uh, being popular and being sold locally. It's worldwide. You know, it, it doesn't matter if it's a Slovenian, Slovakian, Ukrainian, Austrian, Hungarian brand. It doesn't matter if it's good, it's good. You can sell because mm -hmm. Wi-Fi is accessible anywhere, yeah. basically. Yeah. So uh, you just have to know your way around the Internet. Yeah. And the other hand, I, I would like one some additional information because uh, that was our um, that we decided that was the moment that, uh, that we decided that uh, our agency will do a platform uh, for the brands for the Hungarian brands. So actually, it's today was the was the um, the opening our web shop. So we decided to have because we are a coordinating agency, so we can do and have to the industry players. So now it's uh, open for uh, almost uh, uh, 50 different designers, and this is how we can help them to to be online. Maybe they cannot uh, afford to make their own. Uh, web shop, the communication next to this, because it's not enough if you have just a web shop. You have to care about that and you have to work with the, that really hard. Uh, and how, what's the turnout like? How are people <laughs> clicking? Uh, yeah, so know? it's today, no, not yet I have to say, but it's today was the first, first day. So we will see uh, at, at the end of the day. I'm really curious about this, but I think there will be a process that we can reach uh, uh, many, many people. But I think there will be good before Christmas. So everybody, and, and, the, and it's really 
not so easy now to buy uh, physically, so it's easier to buy um, digital. Good luck. <laughs> I think it's um, it's really challenging uh, uh, to have a, a good online presence um, in our times. Um, and what is challenging is to uh, to create this emotional connection uh, with your customer or with your the person you want to attract, right? Mm -hmm. So in a complete digital world, because when you have a store or you have you have a, a physical presence. You can talk, you can seduce, but how do do you seduce on uh, on the uh, digitally? You know, so that's actually the the big challenge for the designers is to have a very authentic storytelling, uh, to find their own uh, language and vocabulary, and to be able to seduce individually and to create a personal connection with their client. Not so easy, actually. Yeah. 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 And my next question, so my next question is like a double one. So on the one hand, what's your personal vision in connection with the future of your country's fashion industry? And on the other hand, how do you see the connection points and, and the possibilities of collaboration between the countries? Jofi, would you okay. start? <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> okay, I will start. So first, um, so I, I really think this is, this one hand, it's it's really a hard time, but other hand, I think this is an opportunity now for for our our regions, countries, designers, and uh, not just the designers, the manufacturers too, because uh, the supply chain, as we mentioned before, we are shorter. So that means uh, the countries who has a, a producing part, it could be a, a good, nice opportunities for the future, but they have to be innovative and, and, uh, and be really good uh, in the highest level. And I think uh, we are common in this, uh, this um, scale. And also for the designers, as also the topics before talk, it's digital, uh, we are in the digital world and as melinda said it's now it's close you we are closer than than um than any any time and i think uh, it's also uh, an opportunity like an agency wise or or um, or community wise as we we represent because i maybe it's it's um, good to tell to the audience that we already uh, talked few months earlier because during the pandemic situation we we had um, meetings and uh, talk about how is the situation in your countries and our countries and shared our uh, our problems and uh, solutions how we say and I think that was the moment that we started uh, our collaboration and now a few months later we are here during uh, the Budapest Fashion and Tech Summit we are we are here in just in one panel uh, discussion but I know that we we can do much more and um, do some physical events together because in this case think together and share knowledge together this is this is the future and we are neighborhood countries and we can share uh, the possibilities uh, with each other so this is how i'm saying the future uh, seeing the future yeah, yeah connecting is really it makes us stronger it makes us bigger and more noticeable because all of our countries we are we all have great designers but basically you know saying slovenian designer hungarian designer it's maybe different than being a central european designer actually we have by now we have connected to all that ex yugoslavian countries to hungary a little bit also you know and uh, we created that regional contest with fashion scout uh, we tried to open doors to the west but as individuals it's much much harder than when we group and regroup, of course, because the, the, I'm, I'm always saying just connect, 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 open doors and uh, together we are stronger. By all means, we have some knowledge, uh, others have other knowledge, other connections. And sometimes even uh, when entry fees to certain fashion weeks, we all know, are sometimes too hard for individuals, but for groups, it's uh, accessible. It's easier. 
I also believe that really sharing the experience within our countries is uh, is uh, can give us uh, new ideas because I believe that our countries are really similar in sizes and that makes us uh, to, to have the like uh, similar problems and similar uh, challenges because uh, the size of the market is very important and uh, gives us uh, like many uh, directions how to move and uh, I always have the experience when we when we share experience and uh, practices that can uh, uh, really faster move you towards your goal because uh, the brainstorming uh, really helps to develop new ideas and and uh, I also feel that networking uh, can really make uh, things move faster and uh, the also um, uh, inspiration from uh, other professionals are, is very, very important to, to create the visions because uh, within the fashion industry and creative industries, you always have to think in advance, like what will happen in two, three, five years. And, uh, and the results depend on what we are doing now, I believe. Daria, what's, what's your opinion? <laughs> so uh, I completely ag agree that we need to connect, to collaborate, to probably make the International Fashion Day for just for us. <laughs> I'm, ju I'm just kidding. Uh, but I believe that, uh, so there is, I think that there is a, a strength, um, the other powerful um, point and our, uh, the most weak point that uh, our industries, the creative industries in general and the fashion industry in, in our countries are the industry that are developing right now because we are young industry, industries just uh, because of the uh, Soviet and post-Soviet influence. Uh, so for the during period of time, not all of us, but the most part of us. And uh, I believe that um, these um, similar common things between us just uh, uh, can um, be also useful for our collaboration. For example, for showing our um, uh, traditional uniqueness, uh, using uh, playing with actually cultural codes in a good sense, uh, using them uh, in a design, using them in a communication, because I believe uh, when we can reverse the traditional, uh, some crafts, uh, some traditional techniques, uh, of um, of design, etc. So we can uh, just to show our um, uniques to the world, and I believe that uh, always a success story uh, because uh, the global market just can um, fill the context of the country, and it's. Uh, um, I think that it's always. Um, uh, it's always uh, interesting just uh, for them to, um, uh, to be uh, um, just to feel uh, through the design uh, the, um, the history of the country, for example. And uh, it's always a uh, nice selling point. Uh, it's always a um, media point because I believe that fashion journalists are more interested in their uh, something behind the scene and uh, they are more interesting to write uh, about designers uh, knowing about the context of their country and so what I'm telling about <laughs> uh, probably uh, we also need to think about about the collaboration uh, of the developing and being um, more with our uh, uniqueness so every each country has a uniqueness and we need to support it uh, also through the collaboration, international collaboration, something yeah. like that. <laughs> we have to, uh, to just uh, to put out our identity. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Our yeah. strength. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Our strength. Yeah. Because uh, unfortunately, a lot of times it happens so that when you have a good designer, it gets uh, snatched by a big brand and mm -hmm. then they work for a big brand. They just neglect their own or just don't develop it anymore. So um, that's a pity. <laughs> it's great to have great new brands. I think we are, um, in terms of the global fashion market, still very exotic in a way. Um, and this is for us a really strong asset, you know. I, I think a buyer or journalist 
as more fun to come to Austria or Ukraine or Hungary than to go to Paris, which uh, where they are anyway going all the time. And we have to really understand the, the strength of our own countries and, and, and support it and valorize it. Uh, so as to um, to develop uh, to develop um, our own um, uh, voice, yeah, and uh, and um, uh, and uh, platforms, yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's a long run. It yeah. it takes a lot of work <laughs> and a lot of time and a lot of connections and connecting, and sometimes it took a lot of traveling. Now it's a lot of interneting. <laughs> <laughs> so. But it actually, it's not that, uh, you know, it doesn't fall in, in your lap. It's a lot of work. So, but and basically mm -hmm. it, it's, um, uh, it has to be done. It has to yeah. be done. And also operating within the region uh, is still sustainable because, yeah, the, 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 you don't have to travel the world to, to get connected. So also from this point of view, it's still sustainable. Yeah, but uh, I, I think we already started those, uh, those uh, steps because uh, Slovenia also uh, has an exchange program. So already some Hungarian brands was there and also in Ukraine. So, uh, and also the Budapest Central European Fashion Week, but we are organizing is also welcome uh, uh, designers from the region countries. So we still, uh, we still welcome them because during this digital uh, fashion week, we also uh, give the opportunity to the international designers to make uh, showcasing in a digital way. So uh, this is something that you mentioned, Melinda, we have to be uh, strong together and have to take steps. Uh, and it's a long journey, but I think something really connected Connect, big connections just started already and uh, we, we have to keep it going and keep moving together and I think we already decided some points maybe we can establish next year 2021 so I hope there will be a next step for us. Have a drink together. Yeah. <laughs> <Hopefully>. <laughs> yeah. I agree so basically we are at the gate of like fantastic future together so <laughs> let's we just have to work together and share our knowledge uh, yeah. with each other so um i think or i hope we will have like a few minutes for the questions so let me just open it um just a minute yeah uh so we got the question and it's like the Budapest Central European Fashion Week is one of the most popular regional fashion week at this point, and it definitely has international ambitions. What is the future of regional fashion weeks? What do you think? So I think there is a future for regional fashion weeks because uh, each and every fashion week has a di different uh, strength. So uh, we decided to invite here uh, many buyers and influencers and uh, and um, media player, but also we this this is the program that we opened for other countries too. And I think if uh, if we are as as we mentioned before, if we are thinking together and share our knowledge and our programs, and uh, invite um, some of the designers to different programs, then that's mean uh, in many and we can reach uh, the audience in many ways. So uh, Slovenia can reach different audience, uh, Budapest Central European can reach different audience, Austria. So everybody can reach different audience, and in this case the message will be the same so it's central europe and uh, and something unique that have to focus and it's a, it's a step i really think those fashion weeks and the budapest fashion uh, central european fashion week is a it's a step before the big fashion uh, weeks like uh, milan and uh, and uh, paris and this is why we invited here um, professionals from those countries to to show them it's it, this is this is a, a fashion week you have to check in the future and maybe 
it, it got the opportunity for different brands to be uh, present in the future in the big fashion weeks. So I, in my mind and in our agency's goal is not to be the fifth big fashion week. We would like to be here in our region, the place where the big fashion weeks can, can scouting and, and, um, and the place where is something unique and special uh, place. I also like to think of ourselves like that we are kind of already the re regional fashion week. We started like fashion week for Slovenian brands, but then it developed quite quickly. We started to be interesting for Croatia, for Serbia, for Macedonia and so on. And it grew. So now basically we have like 50% Slovenian designers and the other 50%, sometimes even more, mm -hmm. uh, um, designers from other countries uh, surrounding us. So it's... Uh, it's it's develop, developing quite fast and uh, at first we were surprised it was like oh we started to be interesting and now it's like okay let's grow <laughs> now we just got the boost up okay 2020 slowed it down a little bit but uh, i believe this is going to get bigger so that's why this connecting thing is a really good thing as you said yes we are widening our audiences with connections mm -hmm. Yeah, and I also really agree with you, Joffy, because uh, I see like uh, uh, regional fashion weeks are really good opportunity for designers to get established locally, to get the experience, to really get uh, get trained, and to really get uh, learn the audience, to to define their identity, and really to get established uh, in your home country, in your region, and to grow really slowly. Because if you go to to the biggest fashion weeks, you you really have to be like 100% ready with everything for media, for, for buyers, uh, for the presentation, for, for the catwalk. Everything has to be perfect because it's really fast and uh, the competition is huge. So I believe that uh, also like the designers, if they start to get established slowly through country and through regional events, they, they cannot do anything more better than this. So I believe this is the... the the best way how to do it and uh, all these regional events are very very important for the whole industry so i i believe that everything will, will work uh just uh, as good as it works or worked around yeah before and and will now <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh. uh, yeah let's yeah. just go ahead <laughs> yeah, just, <laughs> sorry but... Yeah, I'm also agree with the girls uh, that regional fashion weeks are really important for local designers just as a starting point because, for example, uh, we are in Ukraine Fashion Week always very happy when we see some of from our designers uh, in the list of designers, uh, for example, at Milan or New York Fashion Week uh, sell you. So this is like an achievement of our team also as well, because uh, they started from the Ukraine Fashion Week as a young designers from our young um, generation platforms and grow to the New York Fashion Week or Tokyo Fashion Week, uh, etc. But uh, also we are working also as an institution, not only just an annual event, and we have several projects that... Uh, the main aim is to open, to discover and to so support young designers. And I believe that uh, probably this is also the point for uh, local fashion weeks to transform, uh, uh, not to be just a um, two times year event, but to be the um, institution that can help uh, probably accelerate young generation to uh, uh, to mentor them, uh, just to show them the real <laughs> fashion world uh, or something like that. And uh, Ukraine Fashion Week uh, is kind of old uh, institution. We were born in 1997, so and we didn't cancel any season. And yesterday I announced the um, next session. It will be in February, but live online. And uh, I hope that uh, we won't grow um, in, um, in the size, but we still uh, continue to proceed to support young designers. And actually this is our main, um, main aim, main mission and main vision. And I believe that um, local fashion weeks uh, will live with this mission as well. <laughs> 
Camille, how do you see the future of regional fashion weeks? Um, so I'm, I don't have the, um, the same, uh, maybe the same structure than um, here, the other participants, because I, I'm not organ an organizer of fashion week, but uh, I have an institution which is support and supporting designers with um, fundings and also with uh, a lot of consulting and in different fields like production, distribution, etc. So I work a bit differently. We, we do uh, organize events for the visibility of our designers in uh, Vienna and also abroad, but it's not our main uh, work. Our main focus is really on, the, on um, helping them getting sustainable with a lot of coaching and uh, yeah, it's more in this direction. So I, I also believe that it's great to have the possibility to, uh, to get awareness in your own country. It's very important to, uh, for the designer. But obviously, there are a lot more levels than that, as uh, Daria said. Yeah. Thank you so much for, for joining us today. And I think only just one thing uh, we're left behind, and that is let, let's go ahead and, yeah. and work together. So thank you so much again for joining us, and have a lovely evening. Thank you. Thank you Thanks for everybody. It's really nice Bye. to see you. Bye. <laughs> Thank you.